Hi everyone, it's Nalani, um, Diabetes PA. I'm sorry I've been a little MIA from YouTube lately. I got really OCD about editing my YouTube videos and it got to the point where it was taking me so long that um, it just I just didn't have the time for it. But the point of my YouTube channel is to get information out to you guys. So um, I'm hoping you'll be patient with me as far as the editing or lack of editing goes. I really just want to get the info out there um, and hopefully I'll get better at it with time. Um, anyway, let's get to it. So today I want to talk about ketones and why we test for them. Um, I decided on this topic because I was literally up all night with alarm after alarm from my CGM um, telling me high blood sugar, high blood sugar, and um, alarm fatigue is real and I'm exhausted today, but I thought, you know, this is a good opportunity um, to teach you guys about ketones. So um, what are ketones and why do we test for them? Ketones are made basically when our bodies break down fats and proteins and turn them in. They, the byproduct of that is ketones um, and they're everywhere. So cells normally run on glucose um, and the only way glucose can enter our cells if, is with insulin. So think of insulin kind of like a transporter. Without insulin, there's no way for glucose to get from our blood into our cells. So people with diabetes who don't have enough insulin will tend to build up a lot of glucose in their blood, hence the high blood sugar, um, because there's not enough insulin pulling that glucose from the blood into the cells. What happens though is when uh, the blood glucose is high, the cell glucose is low, and our cells need glucose in order to function properly. So essentially our cells are starving when our glucose in our blood is high. So what happens is our bodies enter this sort of starvation mode and they start breaking down fat and proteins and the byproduct of that is ketones. So and ket so ketones can be used directly by our cells for fuel and they don't need any sort of transporter to get into the cells. When blood ketones are high, this is called ketosis. Um, and with hydration and normal blood sugar levels, ketosis is usually not dangerous. Okay, emphasis on usually. Um, in fact, many diets promote ketosis because it is an indicator of weight loss, um, like fat being burned. Um, it's important to remember though that ketones are in are, are kind of acidic and if we build too many of them in our blood, then that turns in from ketosis turns into ketoacidosis um, and it turns our blood acidic, which can be really dangerous for our organs. So people with diabetes don't have active beta cells, or sorry, type one diabetes don't have active beta cells. So there's nothing, there's no protective mechanism keeping them from, uh, keeping them from progressing from ketosis to ketoacidosis. So um, it, it is dangerous for people with type one to be in ketosis because something could easily push them over the edge into ketoacidosis. People who don't have diabetes have functioning beta cells and they make insulin, so this helps prevent that dangerous progression. Ketosis in itself isn't necessarily dangerous. It's the ketoacidosis that's dangerous. So some of these blood ketones pour into our urine and um, if the blood sugar is high and ketones are present, this can indicate DKA, so it's important to um, it's important to go to the emergency room if that happens. Physical symptoms of DKA can be um, excessive urination, excessive thirst, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, confusion, weakness, fatigue, shortness of breath, you name it, and all of this warrants a trip to the ER. Um, an interesting finding is that DKA has been reported in studies uh, testing SGLT2 inhibitors like Jardians, Invokana, and Farxiga in some type one patients. So during these episodes, people with diabetes had normal blood sugar levels, which is really scary for us diabetics because that's basically what we know of as the indicator of DKA is high blood sugar levels kept 
plus ketones. But like for instance, if my blood sugar wasn't high, I wouldn't necessarily think to check for ketones and think, hey, I, you know, I'm nauseous, I should go to the emergency room, I'm in DKA. I would just maybe think that I had a cold or something. So that's where that can be really dangerous and it's important to note if you are on an SGLT2 inhibitor. Um, so, SGLT2 inhibitors are more commonly used in type 2 diabetics um, to prevent, prevent the reabsorption of glucose into the kidneys. This excess glucose is then excreted into the urine. Um, so it's obvious why that would help someone with type 2 or type 1 diabetes. Um, and it is sometimes used off-label in people with type 1 diabetes. But it is very, very important to be aware that if you are on an SGLT2 inhibitor um, and you're having any symptoms of DKA, you can be in DKA even if your blood sugar isn't high. So the most common cause of DKA in type 1 patients is unfortunately pump failures. Um, all this really means is that if you're on a pump, you need to be prepared uh, with backup long and rapid acting insulin. Um, it's important that you always keep an uh, updated list of your settings so that you know how to dose your insulin when you're on the injections. And it's usually pretty safe to just dose your basal um, long acting insulin uh, as the total of your basal rate on your pump, um, but definitely check with your clinician before taking that advice. Um, sometimes when I'm starting a new pumper um, or a pumper with frequent DKA, um, I'll ask them to inject half of their long act, half of their basal as long acting, and I'll put the other half of their basal as their basal rate for the pump, and then slowly decrease the long acting and increase the basal rate as kind of like an insurance policy so that if something does happen where maybe they're you know not dosing correctly with their pump or they get confused on how to in, uh, input their infusion site then we have some backup insurance policy insulin with that uh, long acting insulin to prevent them from going into DKA. Um, da -da -da -da. So anyway, that's that's really all I wanted to talk about today. Um, for all of you that are curious, I did not have ketones this morning, uh, thank God, but um, I thought it would be a good opportunity to teach about it. So um, I love that this blog kind of helps me turn um, my negative experience into a positive. So anyway, um, if you have questions, please comment below. Remember to consult with your clinician before taking any of my advice on here. Um, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day full of uh, very little CGM alarms. <laughs> Bye.